The Pregnant Husband, Chapter 1. Push the Baby. The ambulance silence that chanted it that fateful night threw RZ into a series of panic attacks. His entire gaps got soaked in sweat as he turned to catch a glimpse of the human heads running backwards. He was in total fright as one of the paramedics pulled out the stethoscope. He took it back, basing on the advice of the colleague who gave him a sephigimoma nometer. They were smart in white gubs with a red cross badge on their reflector jackets, with white gloves covering the hands. They were also confused for the instruments used were not requisite for Arrow's state of affairs. No, it was Arrow bewildered. The emergency medical technicians hastily opened the doors and got Arrow onto the stretcher, then rushed him into St. Kizito General Hospital. It was located on Plot 16 Mutebi Avenue. This hospital was the best in town as far as maternity services were concerned. No one believed what he or she saw for a mature man of 30 with a swollen belly as if he was pregnant. They just learned that the person they saw on the stretcher was heading to the labor ward. The postnatal caretakers in charge of the night where the first collapse one after the other at the sight of the man in the room. There was genuine chaos in the hospital because the paramedics who were supposed to go for another patient had to offer first aid to the senior nurses and carry them to another ward for treatment. A neophyte maternity nurse was dispatched to help the handsome man deliver. Nina Bita was doing her internship from this hospital and had spent three weeks here. She had not got acclimatized to some of the equipment and Arrow was her first patient. She was already quivering with what lay on the obstetric bed. Eyes twinkled as she drew close to open the delivery dress. Nina did not surely conquer with the mystery in the room. She took a deep breath with closed eyes, then opened at once. Arrow gave her a hand and spoke in a hoarse voice. She stole a glance at him and admitted the bitter truth that she was dealing with a man. Nina ran to the reception to call for help from other nurses as the doctor drove to the station but found no one. They had scattered to different wards and those idle feigned to be church mice. Poor Nina gathered all her energy and went back to the dark room to accomplish the task ahead of her. She pulled out the delivery equipment one after another. She got a pair of scissors which rested on the tray and she looked at a watch then picked a needle holder. Arrow was in much pain. He began breathing using the diaphragm which Nina saw and asked him to wait. She sweated as if she was the one giving birth. She hurriedly got the dissecting forceps, spongy forceps, and vaginal speculum. Nina picked the jar for the forceps as she went to the theater from where a recent operation had taken place. She brought a baby scale, fetal stethoscope, body thermometer, and a blood pressure machine with her. As she reached the door, some instrument fell. When she bent to pick them, the rest found comfort down as she slid 
and saw her uniform body on the floor. It was terrible inside. Arrow used the little energy and helped Nina to get up. She instead fell into his chest and broke down into tears as Arrow requested her to cry the ordeal night out. She sobbed in his arms with a lucky and never wanted to leave. The person was so nice, cool, caring and beautiful. This pushed her to ask for his wife as Arrow offered a faint smile. He was in pain. He told Nina to go slow with the relationships for people were not as simple as they looked. She suddenly withdrew and gaped at him and inquired who he was. She elevated her second finger direct to his right eye and withdrew it immediately after realizing it was wet. Tears dropped twice as she apologized to him. She was not sure that Arrow was human. He got a piece of cotton and wiped her eyes. Nina wondered the kind of a person she stood with, the man who could not care about himself. She mocked him with a surgical blade, thinking he would get scared, but instead forwarded his hand to her. She ruthlessly cut his wrist and smiled at a man who invoked no domination when blood dropped endlessly. She wore gloves and quickly plastered his cut. Nina felt guilty for surpassing limits. What she had done was unethical and if found, a big penalty would be suffered. There, she apologized to Arrow, who saw a non-issue. She still wondered whether the person was a god. She thought he did not feel any pain. When asked about it, Arrow replied that a smile from her was enough for him to bleed many times. He added that he could do anything to make a woman he loved happy. Arrow continued that he had passed the lower situations than the dirt she put in his eye and a blade cut. Nina experienced ghost pimples on her soft body. She marveled at a man who had embraced Catholicism more than the Pope. Arrow gave her another pale blue labor gown that hung on the door. It belonged to the senior nurse. While putting on, he stood behind her and realized how gorgeous the girl was. He swallowed gallons of saliva and recalled his wife, Ava Flame. A mere thought of Ava, a state of paralysis overwhelmed him as legs shook beyond standing. She had grown too feeble to hold him up. Nina carried him back to the bed as labor pains resumed in a high gear. Nina helped him throw away the gown and spread Alo's legs wide. Suddenly, the ammoniotic fluid poured. The time had come. Nina pulled out the forceps, then drew in the middle of Arrow's legs. Her entire body shook as the senior obstetrician reached and pulled Nina away, then closed her eyes and advised the man to take on the C-section instead for she was not sure of what was going on. She first inquired whether he was to deliver through the, na the anus or mouth. He laughed and asked for a bottle of water, which the midwife denied him and barked at him at once. Push the baby! He too yelled that it was too painful and could not manage. 
Before he bargained for the second alternative, Nina stood in front and enticed him to look at her boobs as he pushed the baby, but the senior midwife could not listen. He slapped him at once on the stomach, then he tries at the cheek. Yes, it was a thunderous one that he woke up and ran out of the bed. Ava had slapped him as well for shouting at her. Chapter 2 The Bedlam Bully The pregnant